What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. Today, we're going to talk about brakes. There's been an update to the XR10 Pro G3 and the G3X, and some of the things that have changed and kind of eluded many of us is brake tuning. So I wanted to take a minute to jump down into the brake section and talk about all the brake settings so that you can tune brakes and kind of know what you're doing instead of just trying stuff. We'll start at the top. Drag brake's pretty easy. That's the brakes that come on at neutral. It's not really drag racing brakes. It's automatic brakes that apply when your throttle gets to neutral used for deceleration if you need your car to slow down as soon as you get to neutral before you get to push brake that's what that's for we also have two more settings that go along with that the drag brake rate and the drag brake frequency now frequencies across the board lower is going to be more aggressive higher is going to be smoother that applies here to drag brake frequency but the drag brake rate you can think of that as uh, if you're driving your regular car and you go to push on the brakes the drag brake rate is how quickly you apply the brakes. And this is the same thing here. It's how quickly the speed control is gonna apply those drag brakes. So instead of just snapping right on to whatever it's set to, it can gently apply those faster or slower. And this is adjustable from like, uh, there's an auto mode, which I think is great to start with. If you don't know what you wanna do, start it with auto. And if you wanted to go slower or faster, you can go from there. But it goes all the way up to 20 is gonna be the fastest or kind of like instantaneous drag brakes. Like I said, drag brake frequency allows you to smooth or make the drag brakes more or less Less aggressive so this really allows you some fine tuning on your drag brakes uh, next we have max brake force now this is the overall strength of your push brake turning the brakes down on your radio is fine you can adjust it that way but sometimes you have to turn it down so low that you'll lose a bunch of resolution from the steps of your brake so the, the lower you run your travel the less resolution you're going to have and the, the chunks of information are going to be bigger the steps are going to be bigger essentially you have less fine adjustment so the idea here is that you can turn the brake down in the speed control and still allow you to have all the range in your radio so you can kind of balance that out so a lot of folks end up turning their max brakes force down in the speed control to retain as much brake travel in the radio as they can Brake rate control is one that a lot of drivers mess with often, and it has to do with how quickly the speed control applies the brakes in regards to how quickly you do it. When you have it set to the maximum, which is 20, it's going to be very linear one-to-one. -one. So as you push the brakes, the speed control is going to do exactly that. And as you lower that brake rate control, it slows that response down to kind of tame the brakes down. Brake timing can be a little tricky and having this slow down a little bit can help with that. So if you slap on the brakes real hard, the brakes don't really respond as rapidly. So brake rate control is another one that people mess with all the time. And then here you have brake control. And this is one that eludes a lot of us. Most of us just leave it on linear because that's the way the speed control comes. But there's three different types of brake controls in here. Uh, linear, traditional, and disc brake. Linear is what you're gonna run 99.9% .9 of the time. If you ever run into a situation where you're having a very hard time getting the front of the brakes, the initial brakes to feel right, they're always too aggressive, you can't for whatever reason get it right, try traditional. It's going to be a little bit smoother up front and come on a little bit later. It's a, it's a different style of brake algorithm, I guess you'd say, than linear is. And then disc brake uses uh, throttle, pos or well, I guess in this case it would be brake position to do brake strength. And overall disc brake is going to be for pretty unique situations. We haven't really had a whole bunch of team drivers convert over to disc brakes yet because uh, it's a little new, it's a little different. So many of us are used to the, the brakes are pretty good already. But if you ever need like super strong brakes, disc brakes are the way to go. And then to tune on the disc brakes, well here I have to turn it on so you can see. To tune on the disc brakes, you get ABS for drops in there and that's the tuning feature for the disc brakes themselves and because the brakes are so strong they've t term, come up with this term ABS and allows you to adjust that more is going to soften them less is going to make a more aggressive type of deal um, I'm always going to run linear for the most part we get down here we have two final settings the brake curvature and the brake frequency and these are more that have to do with feel curvature is a lot like in your radio if you have expo or curves or stuff like that you can go negative or positive curve and we have up to 10 settings or you can even make a customized curve if you like to uh, these are used to really fine tune your brakes let's, let's go look at that customized because this uses that super sweet new chart that we have uh, so you can fine tune how your brakes come in versus the position to the strength type of deal. So something that you can, if you really want to fine tune brakes, you can have your own custom brake curve right in the speed control. 
And then the newest one that changed with this update, uh, brake frequency used to only go from 0.5 up to 16. And now we have the customized brake curve. And this one allows you to change the brake frequency based off of the trigger position. And this really helps fine tune brake feel at high and low speeds. A lot of times when you initially get on the brakes from high speed at the end of the straightaway, whether it be a train car, four wheel drive, off road, whatever the case may be, it's a lot of brake because the motor is generating a lot of power. So you can get all that brake right back out of it. So a low frequency can feel a little aggressive. So it's real hard to get on the brakes at the beginning. What this allows you to do, well, let's just talk about how this operates real quick before we get into that. You got this little guy here and it takes you through your different points. You can see the point moving along there on the top and then you can adjust it up and down in 0.1 increments or you can use the slider to get where you wanna go. What I usually do to make things easy is uh, I'll start here, I'll, I'll get back to these guys and you can hit the little X to delete these guys because you're not going to use these you're just going to go from your first part of your throttle to your back part of your throttle and what i usually like to do is start with the brake frequency all the way up at the initial throttle or initial brakes rather so that when you get into the brakes it's very soft and as you need more you can feed into it and as the motor decelerates that frequency goes with it and you get that deceleration to go down as well and then the other one that i like to do is you don't want all the way down on frequency there so we'll go to the next point this you can tap them or you can use the slider either way and i like to set this right around probably 4k for modified maybe 2k for stock if you're really going to bury into the brakes you hit confirm and then they'll say customize here so you can jump back in there and change that if you need to but let's go back in there and look at this a little bit more but on this frequency you see here, this is the first part of the throttle, or first part of the brakes, I keep saying throttle. First part of the brakes, this is the end of the brakes. So the idea here is that high speed, when you first touch the brakes, it's gonna be very high frequency. And as you bury in more, you're gonna get more grab, more bite, more free, or lower frequency to kind of initiate the brakes a little bit more. So. Well, there you have it. That is a quick one on brakes. The speed control has 40 some on settings. So we're going to try to break these into segments to make this a little easier to digest. We can focus a little more on the important things. Uh, but if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. We also do a podcast. It's called RC Stuff Powered by Hobbywing. Uh, you can find it on your favorite podcast service. We give away free Hobbywing stuff each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. Again, it's RC Stuff Powered by Hobbywing. And as always, folks, thanks for watching The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.